The swap execution facility was given life by the Dodd-Frank Act. After three years of meetings, rule proposals, comments, and more meetings, the final CEF rules were published by the CFTC in mid-2013, and trading has commenced on 18 registered CEFs. John Lothian News attended CEFCON 4 and interviewed a dozen of the leading CEF operators, regulators, and other participants to bring you this three-part series on CEF regulation, the changing market structure, and the new technology required to make it all happen. Uh, the CEF definition is about 50 words. And uh, 50 words in an 848-page law that resulted in, just for the CFTC so far, a 511-page rule with 1,250 footnotes, just to define those 50 words. It was a new entity. It was an entity meant to stand alongside of futures exchanges, of, of DCMs. Um, there was a push early on in the process to have all, CEFs, all swaps just trade on DCMs, on exchanges. And it was very clear that the anti-competitive nature of these single silo futures exchanges wasn't going to fit. Very, very big numbers are thrown out there into the trillions, 30 trillion, 40 trillion, 50 trillion. The number of trades that actually happen in these markets is not necessarily as great as everyone thinks. So to, to have 18 CEFs survive, uh, I don't necessarily think that's possible. You do see some things happening in the markets where credit and rates that, again, we were uh, expecting, uh, it's gone rather smoothly both from the broker side and the dealer side, and we are reporting and clearing and doing the things that we said we would do. Some of those other products uh, have not transitioned as smoothly because uh, you have firms interpreting the rules in different ways and how they're executing and the ways that they uh, plan to execute going forward may not be onshore as we would like them to be. They could be offshore, but we're going to have to wait and see how the market uh, deals with those products. Well, I would guess that what you'll see is a consolidation of the industry around a limited number of CEFs for each asset class, and the economics will force uh, fewer CEFs uh, into uh, the final field uh, over the coming years. You'd really have to understand the nuances of the market structure uh, to understand that there will be some consolidation, but you have to be very clear who's consolidating. I believe the single asset CEFs will struggle to survive. It, it's very, very difficult given that there is a fair amount of competition in each of these uh, product areas. You are multi-asset. You already have liquidity in these product areas. And the reason why people are trading with this is that liquidity. So for a, a single CEF or a single product CEF to come in and take that liquidity away, it's going to be extremely difficult to do in my mind. Going back to flexibility, providing as much flexibility uh, to the market participants uh, is, uh, is critical uh, while we're transitioning from today to tomorrow. We all ultimately are competing with each other. So ICE is competing for clearing with CME. It's competing for execution with GFI and TradeWeb. It's competing with us for middleware. Um, GF, I mean, everybody's got their own pieces of this. Some are more vertically integrated than others. Some have historically been involved from the future side as well as now the swap side. Originally, the CEF was three letters that uh, the OTC market put together. And now, you know, here we are four years later, the CEF is factual, effectively an over-the-counter exchange. It reports trades. They're electronic. It's completely transparent. You have pre-trade and post-trade liquidity. Uh, so I think that there's uh, that this graduation into being a CEF is, is finally here.